Around spring 2009 was the first time I smoked my first cigarette. I was 20 years, 20 years old and damn it, I think it was cool. Cool because my friends also smoked. Cigarettes were simply available everywhere and anywhere in my low income community. But I only smoked socially back then, not daily and definitely not multiple times a day. From the age of 19 to about 33, my current age, I thought that it looked cool as fuck smoking. When I was about 20, I took a trip to New York City for the weekend with a couple of friends. And my only memory of then was walking down Canal Street with a cigarette in one hand and that iconic blue disposable coffee cup that basically screams New York City as much as the Statue of Liberty does to the rest of the world. It felt like the intro to Sex in the City. Man, did I feel cool. Another cool reason was the girls. I'd like to smoke in front of girls that I wanted to impress back then so I could look like a badass in front of them. Girls make me shy if I like them, so it was a way to look cool without dialogue. What can I say? The lady likes, likes a badass sometimes. Even my ex-girlfriend who works in healthcare and the spice of smoking, for the first time I, the first time I smoked in front of her, damn, does she love that. I joined the Marine Corps fall of 2009, and by spring of 2010 the, and the following 13 years of service, smoking was a daily habit. Same shit, I still thought it was cool. I was smoking around half, half a pack a day. Back then, it was Marlboro Menthol Smooths. Going, you know, it was like smoking a damn candy cane. I don't know how I even enjoyed that flavor. A lot of us smoked. It was almost like a bonding ritual. In hindsight, it was both a good thing and a bad thing. So yeah, a lot of us smoked. One thing I learned quick in the Marine Corps was that the smoke pit was the place to be. All the action happened there, and it was probably the best place to get the latest gossip or word on what was going on at work. It's the birthplace of many of my lifelong friendships, lifelong and most cherished friendships. It's where you meet the guys who don't work directly with you, the old farts with funny shit to say, the disgruntled kid who hates the Marine Corps, but can't do shit about it, so they spend most of their time smoking just to fuck off. It's a place where you get advice from your peers or learn some new shit you had no idea about. It's where the thick-haired immigrant from Southeast Asia, the blue-eyed dude from San Diego, the tatted-up homie from South Bronx, and the brother from Miami Day with the gold tooth, and the one person anyone knows from Idaho can sit down and fucking bond without any of the outside shit even existing at the moment. It's where you get stories from the old guy who always starts with, back in my day, the longer the story, the more we chain smoked, of course. Uh, it's unity amidst pure chaos. For sure though, one thing it isn't is a place where reprimand hap happens. Fuck off with that shit. The smoke pit is basically sacred to us. As I got older and continued to my Marine Corps career, the habit only got worse. The stressors of the job are many and pretty much daily from watching countless caskets sent home draped in old glory, to, watch it, to watching friends lose their battles to mental health issues, to the 20 hour work days and only three hours of sleep. Like I said, the job has its stressors. It can also be a challenge to keep your cool at times and having this specific vice really does help, or so I thought. Unless you want me to be disgruntled and cranky as fuck, there better be coffee and the option to smoke. There always is. And quite honestly, the easiest way to get out of work in any military environment is simple, be a smoker. Let me tell you how I got to the point where I was at my worst. Let's just call this recent Helmand province, Afghanistan. Fuck man, I had no clue how my lungs even sustained that torture during that year overseas. But I was smoking at least a pack and a half a day and the occasional black and mild wood tip. How, I have no damn clue. And then, their Saturday nights was also cigar night. Here's an image that still stuck to the back of my dome. Major Jones. Major Jones must have been six foot, five inches tall, 250 pounds of disgruntled old African-American muscle. He would sit there on his raggedy old lawn chair with a cigar in hand that looked like if it was 12 inches by at least an inch wide. Have you ever seen anyone inhale a cigar that size? Like a cigarette? Yeah, I have. The guy looked high as hell every Saturday night. Here's the crazy part about being deployed out there, deployed there and then. 
I could buy a carton of marble for only $25 at the US commissary tent. Across the way, the Danish also had their own commissary spot. There, could, there I could get a carton for only $20. A fucking deal when I used to pay more than $60 a carton back home. This was from 2011 to February of 2012. I still think the main reason it was so cheap to keep us, I still think the reason that it was so cheap was just to keep us fixed on energy drinks and nicotine. Just keeping the machine happy and fed. One last thing about the desert I called home for 12 months. Being in the middle of nowhere, we had no shredders to dispose of classified material. So guess how we did it? At the smoke pit. In a 50 gallon metal drum with a stick of rebar that was wrapped at one end with tape so you wouldn't burn yourself. Some crayon eaters still did. And guess what, we, what I did while churning and burning paper and plastic? That's right, I smoked. Don't worry, I told the VA. And then there's me in the monkey suit. That's what I call my Marine uniform. Smoking around the younger kids at work makes me look like the salty old gunny. I'm not even old, but in Marine Corps years, I guess that's ba basically a middle-aged woman. So what you do is you take your actual age, and then you add your years of service to that number, and that's your true age. So 33 years in, in age plus 13 years of service equals 46. I sure as fuck feel 46. Anyways, now I understand that none of that cool shit is true. Most people don't give a fuck. And living in Southern California, smoking is definitely not cool, thankfully. Barely anyone smokes cigarettes here. I mean, if I'm not on base and I see someone smoking, it's literally only outside of a bar or that one random person walking down the street or standing at their driveway. I run into these about once a week, maybe. My last memory with my addiction of smoking cigarettes was late, late night at a bar on September 22nd, 2022. I was having a casual conversation with my good friend, Kara, letting her know how much I was ready to quit, how much I was over this shit. She let me know that she would be there and for me throughout that process. I had one cigarette left. I shook the box and it sounded just like what it was. I heard the light taps of a cigarette within an opened torn, crinkled, plastic wrap box that once held 20 cigarettes, but now only has one rolling side to, side to side within it as if it were begging to be let out. I opened the box, I took the cigarette out, I lit it, smoked it, and that was it. I said that I wouldn't smoke again from that point. It's now been six months and about two weeks since that night. After 13 or 14 years of smoking cigarettes, I'm finally free. But you know what, though? I didn't really quit cold turkey. Thanks, Big Pharma. I love being done with that habit. I feel healthier, both mentally and physically. And don't get me wrong, it hasn't been that long, and I still get the urge. But don't worry, I have remedies. Toothpicks and mints are my new best friends. I'm also immensely grateful that I have a new chosen family within the LGBTQ plus community that has been my greatest support post-Marine Corps career and quitting. I'm fucking proud of myself for getting this far, and I can't wait to let the world know it's been a year. Fingers crossed.